Okay, so the weather here continues to be absolutely appalling. I haven't had much chance to get out. Um, in the last uh, video, uh, we tried Doctolong Electstream filter out on the um, Crab Nebula MSA1. And uh, if you remember, I was actually very impressed with its performance. So, finally, after yet more days or weeks of pulling weather, uh, I've managed to get out and get a few hours in on another target to try this filter out. And this time, uh, we're going to have a go at uh, imaging uh, Messier 42, which is a great nebula in Orion, uh, and see how the, the filter and camera perform on that. So, let's see how we get on. I'm Dr Ray, and welcome to AstroGadget. So I managed to get uh, about two hours worth of data before M42 uh, went behind some trees and houses and uh, obscured my view. Um, so before we go and have a look at the results of this, there's just something I want to touch on uh, that I mentioned in the last video. And that is that some people maintain that when you use a, a narrowband filter with a one-shot colour camera, you're only using... Um, one small part of the sensor which results in a loss of resolution. For example, if you're uh, using a hydrogen alpha filter then uh, and you're mapping that to the red channel then you're only using the red uh, pixels in the in the sensor. Well, let's look at why I don't think that's true or, or, or accurate. In the uh, ASI 533 uh, one-shot colour camera which we're using uh, in today's session. And uh, at the bottom here, we've got the uh, wavelengths of the visible range of the electromagnetic spectrum. And on the y-axis, we have the uh, relative response uh, of uh, the, the chip to different wavelengths. So uh, this particular um, sensor has a RGGB um, bare matrix. Um, but what we can see here is that uh, in the red end of the spectrum, uh, as you'd expect, uh, there's, there's a high response for the, for the red part of the bear uh, matrix, uh, between sort of 450 and 650 you're getting uh, a, a quite a large response from the, from the, from the green part of the, the matrix. And between 400 and 500 you're getting uh, the highest response from the blue the blue part in the matrix. Uh, and of course all that goes up to make a colour image. Uh, the dotted line here is, uh, is is the average response for the bare matrix. Okay. So if we now look at the regions uh, or wavelengths that the L extreme allows light to pass through, uh, we can see for hydrogen alpha, as was said before, it's, it's centered around 650 nanometers with a, a bandwidth of uh, 10 nanometers. And for the O3 uh, emission, uh, we are uh, centered around 500 nanometers, again with a, a 10 nanometer bandwidth. But what this is telling us is that the greatest response at this, this region, as, as, as we expect, will be uh, for the red part of the matrix, the, the center matrix. But we can see there's also a contribution from the green uh, and also uh, from the blue part of the, of the matrix, albeit to, to a much lesser extent. And likewise, if we uh, go to the region that corresponds to the oxygen-3 emissions, again, uh, not surprisingly, we see that the greatest response is from the, the green part of the matrix. But we're also getting a uh, contribution uh, from, from the blue, see, Maybe roughly half, uh, and uh, a minimal contribution from the red part of the matrix. 
And of course, what the characteristics of this filter mean is that the, the main response uh, for the blue end of the spectrum has been blocked, so we're, we're, we're getting a very, very poor blue signal. Uh, and that means, the crux of that is that the, the, the blue component of our RGB is likely to be uh, uh, noisy. That means it has a, has a poor signal to noise ratio, which we'll see in a moment. So from this we can see that it's, it's not true to say that uh, only one part of the uh, matrix uh, will be used using a narrow band uh, um, filtering. That the characteristics of the filter mean that um, pretty much all of the sensor matrix is contributing towards the image and not just you know a, a fraction of it. Well, that's my thoughts on the matter. Um, am I completely off the wall or what? Um, let me know what you think and put them in the comments below. Look, as I said in the previous vid video, uh, if you use uh, proper narrowband filters with a, a monochrome camera, you will get far better results um, in terms of sensitivity and control over exposures uh, in the different channels uh, than you will using a one-shot color camera with a dual-band filter, a uh, narrowband filter system. However, um, from what I saw in the last session uh, using this filter, uh, you can, or it appears you can, get absolutely awesome results using that particular combination to the extent, I, I feel at least, uh, uh, based on, on the limited experience I've had of it until now, uh, on the imaging I, I've done. I, I think it's a very good uh, compromise between broadband and narrowband um, imaging. Uh, so is my opinion going to change after uh, imaging M42? Well, let's go and find out. So. Uh... This is the image pretty much straight uh, from the camera. Uh, I've, I've done fairly minimal processing. I've performed a dynamic background extraction. I've done a little bit of uh, noise reduction uh, using the true um, process. And uh, I've performed a mass stretch. Uh, and, and, it, and, it looks, and it looks quite good so far. Um, so uh, continue to do then is add uh, some um, HDR uh, transformation, um, multi-scale uh, transformation, which is, as you can see, it's brought out the um, uh, trapezium cluster in the center, and I've performed some um, curves, um, curves adjustment uh, to, 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 to do a little, more, a little bit more color balance. Okay, so we saw earlier that the um, response characteristics of, of this camera sensors uh, is likely to result in uh, a weak blue component in the image. Um, so, so let's let let's have a look at let's have a look at this. So, so what I've done is I've actually um, extracted the the different uh, RGB channels from this image and. Uh, Okay, let's have a look. So, not unexpectedly, the first thing that pops out is yes, the blue, but whilst there is a blue signal, you can see it's extremely um, poor signal to noise ratio. It's very, um, and uh, that is going to be a limiting factor in terms of uh, achieving a nice color balance or, or um, uh, color rendering. So what I decided to do was to actually discard this uh, blue channel uh, for the reasons we just discussed and create a synthetic one using a, a method uh, called dynamic blending uh, using stretched images rather than linear um, images. Now for this, I, I have to thank um, a chap who calls themselves Quiv, the, the uh, Lazy Geek, who has his own YouTube channel. He's based in Japan and he uh, was describing this uh, dynamic narrowband combination with pixel math on his channel, which was uh, 
subject to this paper um, or, or uh, article in this website, Coldest Nights, and, and I'll put the uh, URL up at the end of the, the video so you can have a look yourself. But essentially, this method uh, was written by a guy who calls himself Forex um, uh, to, to, to uh, blend um, non-linear or stretched images. And there are a number of uh, uh, pixel math expressions he gives. And these are the ones that I'm going to use here. I'm going to create, I'm going to create a, an, an artificial green channel and use the what we would the, the green channel as a blue, effectively. Yeah, there, there are some of the lots of these expressions in this article, and, and really it's a question of uh, yeah, applying yeah, whatever you feel is uh, appropriate in the circumstances that, that, that you have uh, for your processing. So bear in mind that this method uh, is really designed for true narrowband uh, imaging using um, hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3 and S2 filters with a monochrome camera. But uh, what I, I, I decided to do was apply this to the uh, channels from the one-shot color cameras just to see what happened. Um, so big, big thanks to uh, Quiv the Lazy Geek, our man in Japan, for um, uh, putting us in the right direction here. So uh, let, let's see how we do this in practice. Okay, so here we are back in PixInsight. So what, what I've done is, because we, we, we saw that the blue channel uh, and the corrected image was poor signal to noise ratio, uh, I've gone back to the uh, pretty much unprocessed one before I've uh, applied the HDR um, transformation. And I've uh, split the channels up as I did for the processed image. But this time, uh, I've called the red channel HA and I've called the green channel O3. Now they're not obviously true narrowband uh, images in as much as they aren't true narrowband uh, filters used with a monochrome camera. Uh, but the reason I've renamed them is because when we go into uh, PixInsight um, and uh, apply the pixel math expressions that uh, we saw on the website. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier. That's all. That's that's the only reason. So these these um, these expressions are taken directly from the article I just showed you. Again, as I said, I'll put the link to that article up at the end of the video. So the important thing is uh, what we're doing is we're using the O3 or the, the green component and map it to the blue, uh, the, the red component still to red. And um, what we're doing is we're creating a synthetic green channel using these two images in pixel math. Uh, make sure that the color space is uh, RGB and that uh, you're creating a new image and there we go and there we go so you end up uh, with something uh, that looks a bit like this depending on which expression you use uh, and you can see it, it looks looks uh, looks pretty awful at the moment um, but uh, because we've got a much stronger signal or uh, in the um, blue channel and in the green channel now, uh, we've got a lot more control over the, the colour rendition. So the next part of the process uh, simply involves using the, the curve transformation process. Now remember these, these images are uh, stretched so we can, we can use the curve transformation here quite easily. Now it's just a matter of playing with the different channels and, and blending them to whatever you find uh, pleasing or not, again, there's no right or wrong with this. It's, it's what you like. But as you can see, um, we're getting probably a lot more interesting red color rendition or balancing than than we did with with the complete um, uh, RGB channels uh, directly from the camera. 
Um, and again, you can see, I mean, I'm, I'm doing this quite quickly, but effectively you can see we're getting a lot more control. And again, if you so desire, you could play about with the hue uh, and so on and so forth. And um, but you get the idea. And of course, once once we've done that, we can apply that to the the blended channel, the blended uh, the blended image. And as I say, this is probably a bit overkill. And of course, what we can, what we can do as well is we can simply add the. Um, HDR multi scale transform. Um, I'll use seven iterations here just with the, the uh, default settings, but again, you can play with that. And that hopefully will bring up the, yeah, bring up the trapezium quite nicely uh, and bring out a lot more detail. Again, as you can see, I've not taken a great deal of care, but I've, I've taken through the process. Uh, and again, later on, you can um, tweak this further. You, you, maybe put it into Photoshop or something like that and, and play with a selective color tweak tweak the tweak the colors to to whatever uh, whatever uh, pleases you really uh, as I say there's no real um, right or wrong it's all artist's prerog prerogative or imager's prerogative in this uh, instance so I'm gonna have a, a little play with this uh, a further play and tweak with it and I'll post you the finished article at the end So what are my thoughts on, on it? Have they changed since um, I imaged uh, M1, the Crab Nebula? No, I, I continue to be very impressed by, by this, uh, this filter uh, in combination with the one-shot colour camera. Uh, I think the dynamic blending method that we talked about using the deconstructed uh, stretched channels of the image uh, and uh, the use of a synthetic green or blue channel in the blending process uh, means that the post-processing can actually augment uh, this performance even further. Um, so am I going to give up on uh, narrowband imaging using a, a mono camera? No, but here's the thing, given the, the limited opportunities and time um, uh, I have for imaging due to this highly variable climate in which I live uh, means that uh, I'll probably be using this combination with increasing regularity for a large number of objects. Uh, look, look if, if, if I can get a consistently good run of uh, good clear nights um, then yes I, I, would, I would definitely use a uh, monochrome uh, narrowband imaging instead but unfortunately that th these uh, opportunities are few and far between so i guess what i'm saying is um, i think that uh, the performance of 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 this combination um, and the time savings that it, it, it allows means it's it's a really good compromise between um, narrow band and broadband imaging um, and, and it can give absolutely awesome images and at the end of the day it's not about producing the best images it's about producing an image that pleases you. I also want to reiterate what I said in, uh, in the last uh, video is that uh, I have no financial or other affiliation to Optolong or indeed any other product that I may mention or, or use uh, in, in these videos. I hope um, that this has been helpful to you, uh, particularly if you're thinking of buying the L Extreme. I hope it's given you some pointers uh, and answered a few questions that you might have. If, if you like what you've heard, then, then please give us a thumbs up and, and please consider subscribing. And uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. But remember, keep watching the skies.
Watch the sky everywhere. Keep looking. Keep watching the sky. <laughs>